and thank you to the organizers for the last minute shuffle. We are early in the campaign and I appreciate the opportunity to take a moment and speak to you all. So my name is Melissa Chowdhury. I was born Melissa Rasmussen in the United States and I was raised to believe in liberty and justice for all. I stood up every morning as a little elementary school student and dutifully pledged my allegiance to the flag. And I remember when Abu Ghraib broke. I believe my father was already deployed to Iraq. He was a Navy doctor. And I saw the images that showed the dehumanization of people that was not in keeping with the ideals of the country that I was raised by. And I think if you're an American child that, and you have that moment, one of two things happen. Either your heart breaks or you die a little bit inside. I think a lot of people in this country have died inside. But my heart broke. It got better a little bit when dad told me how on a trip to Israel, military trip, he took a walk down to the Palestinian side late at night. He wasn't supposed to go. And a Palestinian gentleman brought him in, this strange American guy, and gave him tea. And his family told their stories of their dispossession and everything that Israel had put them through for generations. And he left that night a changed man. That told me that hearts can be changed. Direct stories, personal connection. We can show people that there's another way, that common humanity is actually accessible to all. And that gives me hope because of this moment we're in right now, politically. Right now, we have freedom of speech and freedom of assembly, deeply fundamental constitutional rights being trampled on, being ignored, being overridden by acts of Congress. But there are two sides to America, there always have been. There's been the racism and the genocide and the white supremacy. That's been there since the beginning. But there has also been a vision for shared common humanity. That goes all the way back to the beginning, even the first European settlers to come here. They weren't all genocidal. Some of them were like, wow, these native people, these are cool. We can be brothers on the land. We can trade. Like, this is great. From there, there's a common thread through the Civil War, through the Civil Rights Movement, through Vietnam, through the WTO. What is happening right now, speaking up for the human rights of Palestine, these liberated zones, this is in keeping with the very best traditions of what it means to be American. And I'm running for Congress to take that message and that principle and that hope to the halls of power. I'm running in District 9, that's South King County. That's Bellevue, Mercer Island, South Seattle, all the way down Kent, Tukwila, Renton, Auburn, Federal Way. The incumbent there right now is Adam Smith. So I take it you've heard of him. We, uh, it's not secret. If you go to opensecrets.org, you know, so I'm not stepping over any slander lines when I say. His biggest funders are the Israel industry, APAC and the rest. The funders after that are Boeing and Raytheon and the other people who profit from the creation of bombs and bullets to kill children. He's the head of the Armed Services Committee. So he's in charge. He's a Democrat, quote unquote. He votes kind of the right way on housing and education and other stuff. I promise I'm gonna do all that too, right? But he takes $2 billion from his district in military taxes and he gives back 24 million. That's 100 to one. And he uses that money to line the pockets of his billionaire donors. And, as you probably heard, he calls peaceful protesters like you, your friends, my friends, every one of these liberated zones, totalitarians and fascists, for exercising our freedom of speech and assembly. And he claims to represent a district that is 60% people of color and 30% immigrants, my family. So this is why I'm running for Congress. I cannot live with myself as an American and as a Muslim if I do not challenge him. Just very briefly, we were driving up today, and I saw an American flag waving by the freeway. And that flag has meant a lot of different things to me at different points in my life. When I was a little kid, full of that innocent patriotism that most of us have for our, any country when we're small, I used to, to sing my heart out for it. And then that heartbreak kicked in like I was talking about, right? But today I was filled with a terrifying hope, a beautiful hope, that maybe with Palestine awakening the conscience of the country and of the world, maybe 
if enough courage and humanity and hope and self-awareness and humility and power and strength flows through the veins of the good people of America, and there are a lot of us, maybe we can be the first country to consciously de-imperialize, to step back from our thousand military bases, to step back from our economic hegemony, to step into common humanity and being a responsible member of a richly diverse, beautiful, multipolar world with a rich and vibrant multiracial democracy at home. I don't know if that's possible, but I know that if it is, it's going to be thanks to everyone in this room and everyone like us. All of the immigrants who come here believing in the principles of liberty and equality and the American dream that America says we stand for, we could decide to make that real. All of the people of color, all of the Muslims who believe also in liberty and justice for all and common humanity, and everyone whose souls are intact, who, who chose to have their hearts broken rather than deadened. If we come together, we can make this real. <laughs> In order to do that, we need to get active. We need to get politically engaged and organized. I have a website, ask me for a flyer, I'll give it to you, but I'm only one person. We need everyone in this room and everyone you know to register to vote, to vote your conscience. If you don't know how to register to vote, Google it, it's fine. If you cannot vote, that's okay. You can contribute, you can organize, you can volunteer. Ballots for the primary, I'll speak selfishly for a second. Ballots were gonna be mailed out at the end of July. They have to be mailed in by August 6th for me to make it through the primaries and face off against Adam in November. If you want that to be possible, help everybody you know in that district, vote for me in August, and then again in November. Like our esteemed speakers said, we can free Palestine through political action if we work together. Together, we are unstoppable. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, future Congresswoman Melissa Chowdhury and Shalna.